Hey everybody! Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Today is part two of the Dachshund Tote from Sweet Pea Designs, Sweet Pea Embroidery. They're down out of Australia. Today I did the video on the 10 needles. So yesterday we did the first part of the tote bag on a single needle and today I did it on the multi-needle. I have the Brother Entrepreneur Pro PR1055X. If you are interested in getting one of these machines, I can highly recommend it. The brain inside of the little tablet on the side is almost identical, probably identical to what is in the Brother Luminaire or the Baby Lock Solaris. And it is a fabulous machine. I've been playing with it now. I've had it a couple of months and I really enjoy it. And I'm, you know, I just kind of, I'm still not a pro at it, but I have figured out enough to be able to do this cute little in the hoop project. So what I'm going to do is go through this for my multi-needle peeps. Because <laughs> I've got you guys too out there watching me. One thing I forgot to mention yesterday when I was talking about the pattern. Let me get this. When you first get the pattern, the first several pages are all about the cut sizes of your stabilizer, your batting, and your fabrics. And if you print it out in black and white, it can be kind of hard to tell. In color, if you print it in color, it the page number one, the right behind the cover page, uh, it'll tell you right up here, five by seven hoop. And then that is on page one, and then you jump to page two, the top of page two starts your cutting sizes for the six by 10 hoop. And down at the bottom of page two starts your cutting sizes for the seven by 12 hoop. At the very end, it says finish sizes approximately, right before we get to step one. And it'll tell you about how long they are. So how wide, you know, what the depth of that whole thing is going to, not depth, what the width is going to be. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's get to stitching on the body. When you are hooping a multi-needle, it's a little bit different than doing a single needle machine. On the single needle, the part that attaches to, on the hoop, the part that attaches to the machine is actually the bottom. And the middle part that you recess in doesn't have, that, that doesn't actually attach to the machine. However, on a multi-needle, it's the bottom part that doesn't attach to the machine at all. You put the stabilizer over it, and most of the time, most of the time, uh, your adjustment for your hoop is going to be on your lower um, right side, over, over by your right hand. So, not always, and then a lot of them will have two on either side here. So I'm just going to put my stabilizer over it. Again, this is uh, just a piece of cutaway. And then it's much easier to hoop these. And I'm just going to push it in. Well, I'll make sure I get it even. That would help. Sorry about Harley. You know, as soon as I start doing this, she's deciding she wants to go bark at nothing. Now on the Brother Multi-Needle, it does not matter which way the hoop goes into the frame because uh, like for instance on this end there's a u-shaped indentation here and a hole and on this end it's opposite so if I turn it around 180 degrees um, uh, there it is again and so it does not matter which way this hoop is put into the machine usually though you want this toward the outside I don't know that it really matters but so let's go adjust the frame to put this hoop in this frame was uh, set at the largest size for the, the 300 by 200 millimeter hoop. And in order to change it, not all the hoops fit. See, because like they don't make the arms long enough so that they would all fit. You don't have to do anything with the screw that's over here. But this screw and this screw, you want to loosen those. It beeped at me. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to home and cancel my last thing I was working on. Okay, so you loosen up these two outer screws out here so that this will slide. You only need to slide the left. 
put this in here. Okay, so that ends in and I want this end kind of there. So that's how, now I'm going to tighten these. Just these two, you don't have to do anything with the other one. Finger tighten is fine. Okay, so the five by seven hoop is on now. So that's how you change your hoop size. You gotta change the frame and you want it to fit. And then you make sure that, um, you wanna make sure that these are in so that it can't slide out. Now, I need to put in my purple thread to go around the dog body. So the way I do that, I have spools five, six, and seven are permanently black, white, and red. And I change these um, on the outside. It's just easier to reach. So I'm going to take a couple of loops off the spool that's on, what is that? That's 10. Take it off and put this on and then just tie it with a single loop. I just make a single loop, put the ends through and pull it into a tiny little knot. Make sure that this is open up here there is a slider up here for tensioning, so I'm gonna push it open. And then from in front of the needle, I'm gonna grab and pull slowly to pull the purple thread all the way through on number 10. I'll link to a video below that goes over how to thread this beast uh, step by step by step. So I'll, I'll put that on there. And I need to thread the needle for number 10. Right here, there is your frame with two needles touch that and it wants to know what number and I'm going to go to 10. And then here's the needle threader button. That makes a little tiny hook come through needle number 10. I'm going to take my finger and just make sure that the thread goes under those two little hooks and under this little foot right here. And there is a thread cutter. You bring it up, it's labeled number 10, over and down and it cuts. Then you press the needle threader button again and it is all threaded. So it's ready to go. Okay, I need to pull up my pattern and the way I'm all done with this, I'm gonna hit okay. I have a USB adapter on my machine. The USB port is right up here and I haven't had it happen on this one, but people have commented, uh, I don't know what brand of machine they had, that this can become loose inside, inside the USB. I don't know that that would happen on this one. I'm, I have not had any experience with it. Everything's been fine, but better safe than sorry. I went ahead and got a USB adapter. I'll link to this below, and that way I'm only taking my power tools with thread USB, where all my embroidery designs are. Um, I'm only using it here. This one's got three ports on the front and one in the back. And there's a little hook back here. I'm just going to hang that back. So I'm going to touch the universal symbol for USB. And I'm looking for my dachshund body right there. And there's my dachshund tail. So I'm going to hit the body. And I'm going to hit set. And edit. And it looks good. It says change to a larger embroidery frame. Why do what does it want me to do that? Oh, I think I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. See how this is vertical and my frame is horizontal. There we go. Tell it OK. Edit end. Happy happy. Yep, that was the problem. Okay. So now I need to make sure that I've got my threads and my stops right. So the three spools, I'm gonna go here and touch this. I am going to use white on every single one of my threads except for the last uh, satin stitching, that dark satin stitching. And here's the box to tell you what is going to happen, just like on a regular single needle machine. And so you can kind of keep an eye on that and that'll tell you what 
what's up. So here, this first one, it, it automatically numbers one through whatever, and you can use this little scroll bar to go through. Right here, the little anchor, I did this in the settings, and you can look in your manual to see how to do that. Number five is always black, number six is always white, and number seven is always red. So number one, I want it to be six, which is white. Now, you see we have 17 color stops, or 17 stops. I need to trim away the batting edges before the second stitch starts. So, I told it the first stitch is number six, and then I want it on the next, I want it to stop. So I'm gonna put my hand, and I want that one to be number six. This is a little backwards. To me, I would think stitch six, then stop, stitch two, then stop, stitch three, then stop. No, 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 no. That's not how this thing thinks. So you're going to tell it, stitch the first one, go to the second, stop, then stitch it, stop, then stitch. So if you get that in your head, that works a lot better. I was always so confused on that, and I want to thank Terry for helping me with that very much. Okay, so uh, number three, there's the first piece. I want it to stop before it stitches, I think. Um, let's see, and we got to think about this. So number one is tacking down the batting. Number and then I need it to stop so I can trim around the batting. And then the second is the, uh, let me back up here. The second one is tacking down the fabric. I do not need it to stop when it's done tacking down the fabric. It can jump to number three and that's gonna be six as well. And then the next one is on four, I need it to stop before it stitches so that I can trim away the fabric. Is that right? No, so I can put the fabric down. So you gotta kinda think about the process as you go through this. So I need it to stop, number six, for the color, okay. And then I need it to stop and six. All of these are gonna be white until I get to the, uh, the satin stitching. And I need it to stop at every single time when it's done so I can do something with the fabric. That one's already six. I, I'm gonna need it to stop and then stitch. Next, stop and then stitch. Next, stop, stitch. Stop, stitch, stop, stitch. See how I'm kind of doing that? Now when you get to number 11, it'll start over your colors again because you only have 10 spools of thread, right? So number one there, I need to stop, then stitch, stop, and Stitch, stop, stitch, stop, stitch. We're getting close. 17 is the satin stitching. Stop and stitch. Do I need it? I do need it to stop after that. So stop and then stitch. And you can see this is the satin stitching and I need that to be color number, not number seven, but color number 10. There, tell it okay. And we're ready to go. So I'm gonna hit embroidery, lock, your light turns green and you're ready to go. Oh, man, did you see that? Okay, I messed up. That was supposed to be the tack down stitch for the batting. So 
If you do that, that's okay. I can't believe that thing jumped on there. What did I do? That's nuts. I'll have to go back in the video and look at that. Okay, just like on the single needle, I'm gonna go to needle plus minus, and I'm gonna back up a stitch. And now I'm gonna put my batting down, bumpy side down. Wow, that was crazy, you guys. <laughs> but for the grace of God, tell it okay, lock, do it again. Now, because, uh, th because this frame will go in either way, front or back, on the side of your, uh, whatever the front is, you wanna put front to make sure that if you take the, the frame out or the hoop out when you go to trim your fabric, you're putting it back in the right way because that'll mess you up for sure. So now I have got to trim away the sides of the batting. The next stitch is going to stitch, whoops, see? There's my front, I need to turn it around. Let's get in the habit of that. It's going to stitch the fabric down. Hit lock and go. going to put this face up need to trim away the fabric now it's gonna do the placement stitch. Put it so that it, it covers by like a quarter of an inch and I've got enough fabric to fold down and make sure that the next step is gonna be covered. Okay, fold this over. And crease it. Make sure that's nice and flat and let it stitch. All right, I'm going to take it out and trim the fabric. opened up Brothers My Stitch Monitor and it automatically found because the machine was running and I've already synced it with the machine obviously and it tells me you can see the needle going up and down tells me that it's sewing and it is it says it's only got like two minutes left right there and it shows you the crosshair of where it is So I can go wandering around and my phone will let me know if something happens. Okay, it's all done. My app tells me right here, finished embroidering, all done. So I need to make another one of these and I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you back here when it's time to do the tail. I'm going to tell it okay. That stops the little light from flashing and I'm going to pull out the hoop 
Again, I will trim it when I trim all of the pieces at one time. So I'm going to rehoop some more stabilizer and do it one more time for the next body part. All right, I am ready to do the dog's tail. So um, to get back to the home screen, I'm going to press the little house and tell it okay to delete. I've already hooped my stabilizer and I have my batting laying down on it. I'm going to go to the USB and I want my little tail set and see on this again it came up vertically and I need it to be horizontal so I'm going to rotate. I learned my lesson. There we go. Tell it okay. Edit end and now we need to get to the little thread spools. So I'm going to touch those. Once again, everything is going to be color number six, white, except for the final satin stitch will be the purple. So I'm on, let's see, the first stitch, it's one out of 20. So I want that to be color number six. And then the next one, I need it to stop and stitch. Stop and stitch. So I'm going to continue to do this all the way down until I get to 20. And embroidery. And we are ready to go. you guys all done the next video tomorrow we will be putting the bag together we'll talk to you soon go sew something bye